Hi, in this video, I'll be talking about glycogenolysis. So, if we break down the term, it's glycogen and lysis. So, basically, it means breaking down of glycogen. So, simply, glycogenolysis is the process by which big glucose polymer, or you can imagine them as glycogen, is broken down into sim single glucose residues. But, before understanding glycogenolysis, we should ask ourselves where does it take place, when does it take place, and how does it take place? So let's answer these questions in this video to understand the concept behind glycogenolysis. And in this video, I would also give a real life example where glycogenolysis takes place and it is essential for your body's physiology. So stay tuned till the end of the video. Now, the site for glycogenolysis is muscle and liver. So that answers our question, where does it take place? But why does it take place in muscle and liver? Simply because all the enzymes, such as glycogen phosphorylase, debranching enzyme, and phosphoglucomutase, these enzymes, which are essential for glycogenolysis, is present in the liver and the muscle. And second of all, the substrate, that means glycogen, which is broken down into glucose, is actually stored in muscle and liver as a reserve for glucose. So that is why this is the primary site for glycogenolysis. Now then ask that when does it take place? One of the situation when glycogenolysis is important is starved state. So in starved state what happens is like body is uh, deprived of any kind of external nutrition intake. So bodies has to like break down its own glycogen reserve in order to produce energy. So simply the liver glycogen and the muscle glycogen would be broken down in order to produce glucose and that could be used in the body to produce energy and especially brain need glucose as a fuel, right? So let's talk about glycogen a bit. So glycogen it's like a globule, so it has one particular protein known as glycogenin, and that works like a, a nucleation factor around which the glycogen polymer, which is basically a chain of glucose, exists. And this glycogen is a branched polymer. Now, let's just simplify that structure to this way. So, glycogenin is linking all the branched polymers together and forming like a globular structure. So, the glycogen uh, has two major kind of linkage. One is alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage, that is the straight chain, and the branch chain has alpha 1,6 glycosidic linkage. Why this is important, I'll talk in a bit. So, the key enzyme for glycogenolysis is glycogen phosphorylase. So, glycogen phosphorylase basically uh, sits on the alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds and by an enzymatic reaction, it breaks the bond, and that is why. It, it, that is how it free away the glucose residue. And also there is a phosphate group in the glycogen phosphorylase which basically phosphorylate the glucose and forms a glucose 1-phosphate residue. That's the product. Now, it proceeds through the branched end till fourth amino acid before the fourth, fourth uh, glycogen residue before the branch point. So, let's talk about the glycogen phosphorylase in a bit. So glycogen phosphorylase has a pyridoxyl group or PLP which is basically derived from vitamin B6 at the catalytic site and it has two catalytic sites and each of these catalytic sites has PLP and PLP has a very important role in the enzymatic uh, reaction mechanism and it forms a CIF base with the basic amino acid lysine 680 and in a moment we would understand why it is important. So what ha so glycogen phosphorylase breaks alpha 1 for glycosidic linkage right so in in a couple of minutes we would understand that what is the mechanism behind that so here is a uh, glycogen phosphorylase and here is the active site of glycogen phosphorylase so what you can see is that the phosphate the the oxygen from the uh, alpha 1 for glycosidic linkage is basically getting protonated and further it uh, gets a uh, nucleophilic attack from the phosphate group itself which would make the glucose into a glucose 1-phosphate and leave the glycogen with one less glucose residue and this is how 
progressively the glycogen polymer would be degraded into glucose 1 phosphate residues now whenever the glycogen phosphorylase gets to the end of a branch point at least four uh, residues away from the branch point it halts now then glycogen phosphorylase gets replaced by a debranching enzyme now debranching enzymes are special because debranching enzyme can break the alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage which glycogen phosphorylase can't break so debranching enzyme would break the alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage and make it a linear chain of glucose right now and once it is a linear chain of glucose our glycogen phosphorylase can again attach and start breaking down the chain again so this is how glycogen phosphorylase is one of the rate limiting enzyme in glycogenolysis and we know how now once the glucose residues are broken down and in format of glucose 1 phosphate now let's see what happens to this glucose 1 phosphate so glucose 1 phosphate with the action of phosphoglucomutase is getting converted into glucose 6 phosphate now phosphoglucomutase has a phosphate group now this phosphoglucomutase uh, is getting a nucleophilic attack from the oxygen which is attached to the carbon number 6 in the glucose 1 phosphate and as a result what has happened it is forming a transient intermediate known as glucose 1 6 bisphosphate and forming a serine residue instead of a phosphoserine residue in the phosphoglucomutase enzyme uh, catalytic site now a further reaction which is another uh, nucleophilic attack to the uh, carbon residue 1 converts this whole thing to glucose 6 phosphate so that is how by the uh, enzymatic action of phosphoglucomutase glucose 1 phosphate is getting converted into glucose 6 phosphate now glucose 6 phosphate is a very important intermediate because glucose 6 phosphate can either enter the glycolysis and in the glycolytic pathway it can form the pyruvate or it can also enter the pentose phosphate pathway where it can produce NADPH and ultimately give rise to ribose 5-phosphate which could be used for nucleotide biosynthesis and all. So how the glucose 6-phosphate would be utilized is the matter of body's metabolic demand. For example, if the body requires energy, it would quickly use the glucose 6-phosphate into uh, pyruvate and produce energy that would provide body uh, instant energy but if the body needs uh, anabolic responses such as fatty acid biosynthesis cholesterol biosynthesis etc and etc then body would produce more nadph or body needs a lot of transcriptional activity or a lot of gene expression to be happened then it would choose the pentose phosphate pathway to channel the glucose 6 phosphate into that pathway now it entirely depends where the glucose 6 phosphate would be channeled in pentose phosphate pathway or in glycolysis and it all depends upon the external demand so let me give you a current example so let's say you are standing on a dog's tail and the da dog is like mad over you and trying to chase you and you are like hell scared so definitely your muscles need to move and immediately your muscle need a hell lot of glucose but after a while your muscle glucose is depleted but still you need to run to avoid the dog bite and that is why you need to break down glycogen in your muscle to produce glucose and that could power up your muscle right so one hormone which is epinephrine or adrenaline it's regulating the glycogen breakdown upon this kind of flight or fight situation so adrenaline binds to adrenergic receptors on the muscle cells and in a G-coupled signaling mechanism takes place, which ultimately leads to cyclic AMP generation. And cyclic AMP dependent kinase or PKA is activated. The PKA catalytic subunit actually activates phosphorylase kinase. And phosphorylase kinase is an important regulator enzyme. So whom does it regulate? Phosphorylate kinase actually phosphorylates 
the glycogen phosphorylase. Now we have already learned that glycogen phosphorylase is so important to break down the uh, alpha 14 glycosidic linkage and thereby breaking down glycogen into glucose. So thereby the hormonal control to an immediate flight or fight response would increase the phosphorylase activity which can eventually break glycogen into glucose and give the uh, muscle instant uh, source for glucose to channel it into glycolysis pathway and Krebs cycle to get the energy and that would provide your pump your muscle up for running and and save your life right so that is how the hormonal control is important over metabolic pathways in order to uh, save our body's physiology so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you